So welcome back for the second half. Thank you. Um, this is in a few different sections and uh, it's a kind of mixture of the galactic stories and my own personal stories and, I, and yours actually coming up. Um, this next piece of the, this next section, it's about 10 minutes, um, it's really about the journeys because we're all born here and we all we come into this world and we see the life around us and some of us one day go, oh, look up and we wonder, like in the first half. <clears throat> and that kind of sets us on it. When we do that, that sets us on quite a journey when we start to wonder about things and feel things and sense things and like my friend Esau I was talking about, you know, meeting people who could hear lights and, you know, um, it's not so much for the phenomena, I think that it's really more indicative of a very deep sort of emotional or spiritual connection that people feel with their experiences. And <clears throat> so this next part is like a 10 minute meditation, really just about, well, it's a reflection for me about my own births and deaths and lifetimes and the whole journey through time of the planets and the galaxies which spans billions and billions of years. So I guess it's about a recontextualizing of all our little daily struggles and woes. In a bigger picture that can look a little bit different. And um, so this is a bit of a meditation on that.
One of the things that changed my life with the um, looking up at the constellations was back in the 90s I was playing in some um, I was playing guitar at that point just for fun for a bunch of years in some rock and roll bands and blues bands and um, <clears throat> I used to teach sort of 10 to 3 at a, some schools from the Rudolph Steiner schools out, out of suburbs of Melbourne up the river valley and um, often at nights and weekends I'd play in bands and I'd get home late, I'd get home midnight or two in the morning <clears throat> and I'd be pretty um, revved up from having played all night. I didn't do drugs or anything at that point and just I was just excited about the music and had a really good time and had a lot of energy when I got home so I'd only been a while since dinner so I'd make myself a big bowl of wheat bix and tip half a punnet of cream on top and get my spoon, put the television on and sit down, munch, way, munch my way through whatever was on. And um, at the time I was living in a kind of corner of my parents' home in Melbourne and generously lent me some space there. It was a bit of a lean time playing in the bands and teaching a few hours at schools. And um, so from there, one night I came home as I did, had done for a couple of years and sat down. I was just about to turn the television on and I looked out through the kitchen door and <laughs> there was this the family dog. <laughs> This is at about two in the morning. This fun, funny, mongrelly, big black and white thing looking at me through the window. He was just looking at me. And um, it was the sort of look that looks right through you and all your stupid things in your life. Anyway, if you've had that experience, you'll know that look from people or animals. Anyway, so Ralph, the dog, I kind of felt compelled to check out what he was trying to tell me, so I didn't turn the television on. I left my wheat bix and I opened the door and I went out into into his world. Two o'clock in the morning and closed the door behind me and it was really quiet. There was an old wooden fence and a shed and some just messy backyard, a bit rainbow tamble and. Um, he was just looking at me and we, we, we just sat down and minded his own business but in that quiet and he had a few friends who were rats and they'd walk along the back fence and he'd sort of look up and mind his own business. But in that quiet amongst the vines and the back fence and the dog I remember just going wow this is really nice and I looked up and it was a completely black night and the stars were really bright in that there was no moon, I think, so it was a really black sky with these piercing stars. And there's this enormous sense of quietness and um, a kind of realness that I think I'd got lost to coming home from bands and watching tally and then going to bed. And so I have my family dog to thank for a kind of turning point in my life. So... Um, but again, relating, you know, part of that peacefulness was him sitting out under the stars at night. He really enjoyed it. He, was, he wasn't looking at the stars, but he was in, you could feel it. He was just enjoying so much being out there. And, and it was so nice that he managed to communicate for me enough to come out and share that, share that with me. And um, so this is just a, another slightly reflective piece before we move on. It's kind of all the experiences like with the dog and times I've been down by water and there's the, the night sky, you know, the moon shining on the water or the, or the um, stars reflected and the waves just make it all shimmer and dance. And I remember similar experiences catching trains across Austria late at night coming back from, to Vienna from some of my um, concerts or sometimes um, studies with... A maestro who lived out of town and I fell asleep one night on a train from West Austria back to um, Vienna. I was meant to get out at I think at Innsbruck and somehow I woke up in 
can't remember which way I was going. Anyway, I went too far. I meant to get it to Innsbruck and I got out. I woke up and the train was very still and I was looking around. It didn't look familiar and there's a sign that said Salzburg. So I was like, oh, okay, I've gone a couple of hours too long. I must have fallen asleep. But again, there was this incredible quietness. And being an Aussie, you know, I hadn't really been around snow much. And... Um, what happened was it was snowing really heavily outside. And if you've ever been in a country where there's heavy snow, particularly at night, there's a unique quietness that happens because the snow, the falling snow absorbs so much of the sound. It actually changes your whole sonic environment. And even in the train, you could feel that and sense that through the, through the glass. So anyway, I got out and waited for a few hours and got the next train back to where I was meant to be. But... Um, those sorts of experiences, again, um, you know, the weather controlled by, the planet orbiting the sun. So for me, all these things are connected. They were, it's all a cosmic journey. It's all a cosmic interplay, and we just can't get away from it. And I'm kind of glad that that's the case. Anyway, so um, this is a bit of a, a touch into some of those experiences. And just for fun, because it's part of my history in this life of playing with musicians from all different parts of the world, this has got a bit of a North African touch to it.
So we're nearly at the end. And um, <clears throat> I'm just going to play you out with something maybe a little bit more classical sounding. But it's still part of the story, and I guess um, without making any direct associations so much in this part of the program about the stars or some particular topic, I think the music can speak for itself. And it's really just a journey, an invitation to come on a bit of a journey together, and um, it's one of my favourite things to do. So. I guess what's what's really motivated this whole concert was trying to understand what sort of ideals people have. Because I look around the world and there's a lot of things that seem to suggest that they don't really have ideals or they maybe they do, maybe their ideals more about taking than giving, maybe more about hoarding rather than giving back. So we end up with um, a lot of things that are kind of unhealthy because we, we are a universe and all our parts need to function healthily and work together. We can't really live a life that's sane and nurturing for ourselves and others if, if our planets are all crashing into each other, if our solar systems are getting off centre and going off and doing other things. So... I guess I, I came away just going, wow, imagine, imagine having an innovation, like an, a discovery or an invention, and just making it available to everyone. And you think, well, that's what the people did with, you know, watches or wind-up watches or electricity or plastic containers to put in your fridge, all these sort of things. But it's not really quite true. And so I was just wanting to leave you with the idea of, imagine... Having some innovation, each one of you, it might be a, just a way of being or it might be a, some sort of discovery or medis, medical thing or some educational thing about money or housing or whatever. And imagine that it would just be available to everyone. Just suspend disbelief for a moment. Regardless of their status or income or ability or connections and that would make that it would be just surely what everyone would want if you invented something or you discovered something you brought something to the world that was wonderful and was going to lift uplift people's lives and help them to be more healthy and connected and and um, humane you'd probably you'd probably want that I don't think anyone put their hand up and say no 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 I wouldn't do that so it would actually be something you'd have to go out of your way to do a mean and cruel thing to exclude anyone from anything. And this is where I got back to reflecting about the universe because imagine, imagine, all, imagine light in the stars only being available to a, a few, a limited few stars, and all the other stars were all dim or invisible. So there's just a few who, who got access to the light all the other stars, what would that be like looking up at night? What would that be like looking up at night and seeing a universe that looked like that? So, of course, that would be horrible and that isn't what happens. And so, I think it's an, a nice metaphor for not losing to not lose the light from humanity and let it recede into being a sort of dark mass of billions of light-deprived people while only a few enjoy light in excess. That light which was intended to light up all the stars that all could light up and shine. So that's the thought I want to leave you with. Um, so I'm going to play you out with some some more music just to feel that connection, how the stars do it, and how we've been doing it, and maybe we can realign it differently.
Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was so happy to see people come tonight, given the um, sort of confusing information that's going around and I think it's really great that we can be here and be careful but not be frightened and all these sorts of things because um, keeping ourselves healthy is part of mm, caring for ourselves and being in a good space, not in a frightened space. I think that's good for anybody's immune system. I just want to say a couple of things. Um, and there's so many. First of all, I'd like to thank Tanya for pulling this whole thing together as she does with every show that I do and how you all got here. So thank you, Tanya. 